This disease is recognized as a global zoonosis yet remains remarkably neglected, despite unmatched lethality. It remains a threat underappreciated by healthcare practitioners in many endemic areas, often owning to lack of rapid diagnostic tools, post-mortem evaluations, and public health reporting. The therapeutic approach remains a crude guess at best, based on anecdotal experiences shared across the globe. The prevalence of this disease varies by location depending on animal control effectiveness and immunization programs. The largest number of human deaths annually was recorded during the first half of the 20th century, with an average of 50 documented cases per year. Most were related to rabid dog exposure. Yes, exactly, the disease we are talking about is rabies. Take a look on its etiology. Rabies is highly neurotropic virus that evades the immune surveillance by its sequestration in nervous system. Upon inoculation, it enters peripheral nerves. A prolonged incubation follows, the length which depends on size of inoculum and its proximity to CNS. Amplification occurs until bare nucleocapsids spill into the myoneural junction and enter motor and sensory axons. At this point, prophylactic therapy becomes futile, and rabies can be expected to follow its fatal course, with a mortality rate of 100%. The rabies virus travels along these axons at a rate of 12 to 24 mm per day to enter the spinal ganglion. Its multiplication in the ganglion is heralded by the onset of pain or paresthesia at the site of the inoculum, which is the first clinical symptom and a hallmark finding. From here, the rabies virus spreads quickly, at a rate of 200 to 400 mm per day, into the CNS, and spread is marked by rapidly progressive encephalitis. Thereafter, the virus spreads to the periphery and salivary glands. From the view of diagnosis and therapeutic opportunities, we need to know that rabies does not cause the cytotoxicity. Neuronal morphology and lifespan is normal throughout the course of disease. Death occurs from global neurologic and organ dysfunction. There are 10 viruses in the rabies serogroup, most of which only rarely cause human disease. The genus Lysivirus, rabies serogroup, includes the classic rabies virus, Mokola virus, Divenhage virus, Obadiang virus, Katonkin virus, Rochambeau virus, European bat Lysivirus types 1 and 2, and Australian mutation, hyperactivity, restlessness, thrashing, biting, confusion, or hallucinations. After several hours to days, this becomes episodic and interspersed with calm, cooperative, lucid periods. Curious episodes last less than five minutes. Episodes may be triggered by visual, auditory, or tactile stimuli or may be spontaneous. Seizures may occur. This phase may end in cardiorespiratory arrest or may progress to paralysis. The remaining one-third of patients with rabies develop paralytic rabies, also known as dumb rabies or apathetic rabies, because the patient is relatively quiet compared with a person with a furious form. Paralysis occurs from the outset, and fever and headache are prominent. Paralytic rabies may initially mimic Guillain-Barre syndrome GBS, with ascending lower, motor neuron weakness unpreceded by classic MAD signs, and rabies should be considered in the differential diagnosis of GBS. Coma, this begins within 10 days of onset and duration varies. Without intensive support of care, respiratory depression, arrest and death occurs shortly after coma. How to approach? When the patient presents with the bite, the wound should be cleansed immediately with soap and water, flushing it thoroughly to remove saliva. Debridement and careful exploration for foreign bodies such as broken tooth are essential, this should take at least 10 minutes. Generally, leave wounds to heal by secondary intention to permit drainage of wound fluids and prevent infection. Inpatient care. Inpatient care with rabies may be required if wounds are extensive or are on the face and hands, if surgical repair or replacement of blood loss is required or if infection occurs. Pre-exposure prophylaxis or immunization. 
Pre-exposure, active prophylaxis or immunization is recommended for veterinarians, veterinary students, persons who regularly explore or hike in caves, laboratory workers who are exposed to rabies virus or who handle specimens considered high risk for rabies, and persons who visit countries where rabies is a significant problem. Post-exposure approach. As previously stated, washing and wound debridement at the time of a bite is essential, along with careful cleaning of the wound for longer than 10 minutes. Generally, leave wounds to heal by secondary intention. Antibiotic prophylaxis should be considered. Administer HRIG to any person not previously vaccinated against rabies, at a dose of 20 IU kg, for adults and children. Apply as much of the dose as possible at the injury site and the remainder as a deep IM injection in the gluteal area. HRIG may be administered as long as 7 days after the first dose of vaccine if it is not immediately available when the patient presents for evaluation. Doses of all the vaccines for post-exposure prophylaxis are 1 ml IM in the deltoid or in the upper outer thigh in infants. Mild local and systemic adverse reactions to these vaccines and immunoglobulin may occur but are usually treatable with supportive care, antihistamines, and anti-inflammatory medications. Local pain, erythema, headache, nausea, and abdominal pain may occur. If prophylaxis is warranted, do not postpone or discontinue treatment because of mild adverse effects. Hope you find the video informative, stay tuned with us for more such videos.